So in a previous videos, we've spoke about how we catch deer, and today we're going to talk about how we handle deer. So once we've got the deer in hand, what are we doing with it? Our big priorities are the health and well-being of the animal, and then collecting the data that we need. So both of those things are very important. To help us stay more organized and efficient, we have uh, multiple capture packs so that we have everything we need for our deer processing in, and we keep everything in the same pocket so every team uh, or crew member knows exactly where everything is. The first things they're going to do is they're going to put this blindfold on the deer. This is just a cheap stocking cap. We cut a hole in it, slide it over the deer's uh, eyes, and the nose can stick out so we can breathe. So that's the first thing we do when we're restraining the deer. So the next step is that uh, they're going to yell out to the drugger. And the biggest reason for that is that the dosage is different from an adult buck to an adult doe to a fox. So the drugger would uh, put their gloves on first thing, and then depending on what we have, we would uh, give them a dose of BAM. So like Mike said, every deer gets a different amount of yeah. yeah. Once that happens, so all the drugs have been administered to all the deer that we've captured at the time, now everybody's just going to be quiet for five, ten minutes. We just need to give it, give some time for the deer, the drug to take its effect on the deer. So then after that, then the next thing we're doing is we're doing the TPR, temperature, pulse, and respiration. So we've got, we've got our uh, stethoscope, we've got our thermometer, we have these uh, sterile sleeves put on them. And uh, how often do you experience the deer getting either a little too hot or too cold? Uh, we haven't experienced them getting too cold at all. They sometimes will get a little hot, but nothing that uh, we usually put alcohol yeah. on the pits or uh, a little snow in there, and that, that definitely goes down. And it just doesn't, doesn't happen that often. No, this not at all. particular drug, uh, so, so some capture drugs are different than others, and some really compromise the ability of the animal to maintain their body temperature. This particular drug does. But one of the the potential things that we pay attention to with this drug is um, respiration. And so what we'll do in the field is we'll have oxygen available uh, to the deer. And oftentimes we'll just provide supplemental oxygen. Uh, they usually don't need it, but we do it as a fail safe. Anna, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, sampling kit? Yeah, so these are our sampling kits that we take to every capture. We take multiple to every time we go trapping. And they have all the same things in them. So we have uh, absorbent pads in them, and this is just for a clean workspace when we're pulling the teeth uh, or doing a re rectal biopsy. Also, another, the, probably the most important thing in here is the unique ID, which is the ear tag number. So every single thing in here will have will be labeled with the unique ID. So that is also used uh, to take a body photo of the deer that we keep. And then this is a sample, a fecal sample that we take before a rectal biopsy. This is if we pull a tooth, um, and we typically only pull a tooth if it's older than a yearling, so we look at all the teeth, and then if it's older than a yearling, we'll pull a tooth. Um, this. We have two ear tags, one that we put in each ear. And here's the applicator. Yep, so each ear tag goes in there. These are basically livestock uh, ear tags. And then typically before we put an ear tag in, we like to take a genetic sample using the biopsy punch in a piece of cardboard and then that just goes into this tube. And then we also have a rectal biopsy kit, which has uh, some formula that we keep our sample in, a speculum that we use, um, and then just another cassette and another tube to keep some samples in. So Mike, why don't you walk us through the, the, the rectal biopsy? Yes, yeah, so rectal biopsy is a, a, a surgical procedure, but it's a fairly simple surgical procedure that we do that um, we're removing a small piece of tissue um, in the rectum, basically right at the exit, <laughs> the exit area, and um, it's about the size of a nickel, maybe at the most, somewhere around the size of a nickel, and we take that out and put it in the cassette, and that actually gets sent to the WBDL, Wisconsin Veterinary Diagnostics Lab. The only other thing um, that we'll do that involves needing the drug would be pulling a tooth. And so we actually do, at the same time we give the lidocaine cream, if it is old enough, we will, um, use a shot of lidocaine, just like you would have at the dentist, and then we use what's called a tooth elevator, and just a simple set of pliers. Because, you know, we're working in the deer's mouth at that time, there's getting saliva on them, 
uh, these are one-time use objects, and so so we're not going to get slide on this and then use it on the new recycling. Yeah, everything here actually is one-time use for the most part. So the collars here, we've got two different types of collars. This is a buck collar, and this is a doe collar. These are GPS units, and so um, there's a satellite. So they, they take GPS locations and then use satellites to send the locations to us. So this is the doe collar, and this is the buck collar. And the reason we have two different designs is because the, the, the buck collars have some stretch in them. They're elastic, and they also have the elastic portion is folded in three places and then has pleats and sewn in them, the folds are sewn in them. And so as the deer, as the buck grows, the collar can grow with the animal a little bit, and uh, as the buck gets in the rut, so their necks expand, expand quite a bit during the rut. So that pressure from the neck will just pop those pleats, expands with the, the, the growth of the buck's neck, and then because it's elastic, it can, um, when, when the buck's neck size gets a little smaller, this collar can shrink with it to some degree. Can you tell them a little bit about uh, the measurement that you're using? Yeah, so for adult does, we do have uh, the bits and so this is just our bit and they each have a frequency written on them. We would put it into our the applicator which is this uh, after writing out the frequency so we can keep track of this. We soak it in Nova sand for 10 minutes to disinfect anything that may be on it and then we put that um, into the dough and this will allow it gives off a signal that we can listen to and it will let us know when when she might have had fawns. So we'll do the, the hind foot length We'll do a chest girth. These are uh, measures of size and body condition of an animal. And then we'll also, uh, we, 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 um, we do a body fat condition assessment. This is looking at the spine, the rear, um, the bottom part of the spine from behind the ribs to the tailbone. Just by feel, feeling what percentage of that area um, can you feel the spine. Because when you can't feel the spine, that's because there's fat on top of it. So they'll, they'll feel across that and say, okay, 60% uh, of it was covered in fat, or 0% of it was covered in fat. It's a subjective measure, but it, it, it's pretty meaningful in, in terms of um, distinguishing animals that are poor in good condition. So the other thing we do, pretty much the last thing we do just about is weigh the animal. And then two folks will lift it off the ground and the other person will read it. So we'll get a body weight. So that's when we're done. And so then after that, we're going to do a final check to make sure we've recorded all the information appropriately, and then we're going to give the drug reversal. Um, it's just another point. This is the app So we give double of what we gave BAM, and then we typically give it on the other side of where we gave the BAM. So if we gave the BAM on the hind right, we would give the Apamazol on the hind left. That usually also takes, and then after we uh, give the Apamazol, we take the blindfold off and then lay it over the eyes so that they do get up without us seeing right away they don't have a blindfold on them and then give it about another 10 minutes and they have a smooth recovery. Yeah so that's that kind of just goes over what we do when we're handling deer and the data we collect and how we uh, monitor and manage the health of the deer. Thanks.